In this video, Trent and I are going to tell you what you can expect to see in the H2B visa process for 2022. If this sounds familiar, it's because we put out a similar set of videos in 2018. This is part one of a multi-part cycle, so make sure that you check out the playlist that it's connected to. If you've been yearning for somebody to tell you what to do, well, we're back. We'll see you after the bump. Welcome back to Law Great. This is the channel where we give you reliable information to help you make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes on your immigration journey. For H2B visas, we've been one of the premier channels for giving you information that you can't find anywhere else. We are here to talk to you about an overview of H2B visa process. This is the big picture video, what you need to think about in the big picture of things when looking at this process. Like you said, it's the big picture. We're not gonna go into every single document and discuss you know, different strategies for filing. What we're gonna do today is sort of hit those major milestones. We've got about five major parts of the H2B visa application process. And today, we're gonna give you a little bit of information on each one. Oh, well, fantastic. Well, listen, I'm a worker. I want workers on April 1st, 2022, right? Let's say I'm a landscaper. When should I apply for them? March, February? Like, how long is this process, Trent? Well, it's quick, right? I heard it's quick. Let's let's unpack what you're asking. Okay. Okay. So when do you apply? Yeah, I want to apply for workers. I don't want to answer that yet. Let's back it up. All right, let's back it up. When do you start the application process? March 30th. Right now. What what is the The application process has to start early, early, early. We have to file what is the prevailing wage determination. It's document 9141 and it needs to be filed November, November 1st. Why November 1st? We like to file 150 days prior to the start date. For an April 1st start date, that would be November 1st. But in prior years, didn't we file as late as like December 1st? So why change it this year for April 2021? Because I bet you if somebody went back and watched that 2018 video, they'd hear us saying, hey, make sure you get that thing in before December. Why this early this year? Yeah, so traditionally there is about a 30 day turnaround. So if you filed on December 1st and maybe it only took 27 days to come back, then, you know, for that next step in early January, which we're about to get to, you might still have time to file. But what we're seeing is a real increase in demand for these visas. It's happened year after year and we believe it's just going to continue to happen. Um, which will probably result in a longer than 30 day turnaround. And we will cover that in what the editor is gonna insert here, our prevailing wage video. We'll tell you exactly what we think about that timing, but we're gonna keep going here. But remember, what you wanna do is file early, and this year, filing early and on time really means that November 1st period. In fact, we're not taking clients after November 12th because uh, the, the idea of filing after November 15th for a prevailing wage feels very scary at the moment, given the large number of, uh, of uh, applications we've seen. Okay. okay, so what happens next? Big picture. Right, so you've got your prevailing wage. Let's say you did file in early November, you get it back and you're ready to move forward. The next step is the 9142. This is submitted via flag. That's the online system. Santiago is gonna put it up here, our video editor. Flag. Okay. Flag. We love FLAG, the 9142 is submitted through FLAG and it is submitted in a 72 hour window. We don't know the dates yet. Sometimes it's January 2nd through the 5th. Sometimes it's January 1st through the 4th. We don't know yet, but it's a 72 hour window, first week in January. That's when we need to file the 9142. As we mentioned, if you don't file your prevailing wage in time and you don't have that back, then you can't file the 9142 that first week in January. And then you're just out of the process completely. Okay, and and that's why we're really looking to avoid things. I will say that this October cycle, so when we were filing for prevailing wages in in June and July, it was taking a full four weeks. You know, some were pushing closer to five weeks. Yeah, I mean, the 30 days, it's pretty consistent. Sometimes it does take longer than 30 days though. It does, and especially when there are more applications, what we do know is that the prevailing wage officers are under great stress. Those reports have come out from the Department of Labor. So that's another reason. But okay, so we we, we make the temporary labor certification. We, we write a temporary statement of need. What happens next? 
So we filed the 9142 in that three-day three, three day window. Following the three-day window, there's a published list of applicants. Applicants are sorted between group A and maybe group E, group F, depending on the number of applicants. Um, group A is the group that is processed first by the Department of Labor. Then group B, C, and so forth. Um, following that classification and processing, you will receive a notice of deficiency or a notice of acceptance. If it's a notice of deficiency, respond accordingly, get that notice of acceptance, and then move to local recruitment. Okay, so in the past, this is where 2021, 2022 is a lot different than past years. Uh, you would have to recruit by putting ads in and around your work zone, right? So we still have to do that, part, right? So you, you have to kind of conspicuously put your job order in and around your place of work. Uh, and then you'd have to put an ad in a newspaper that ran on Sunday that was either the biggest newspaper of record in your area, right, that was a daily, or if you were in a rural area, it didn't have to be a daily, it just had to be the biggest newspaper that kind of, that was near where you are. All that's gone now, that newspaper piece is gone now. That's gone. Um, so no more paying by the word to put it in your Sunday Times. Those days are gone. Good that news. Is, that is replaced by an automatic posting on the seasonal job directory. Um, you don't have to do anything for that if you filed the 9142 correctly. Um, Department of Labor does it for you. In regards to the, you know, the local recruitment and advertising in non-conspicuous places. You can defeat that by posting on your website. Um, and then the last one is your state workforce agency. Again, if you file your 9142 correctly, that notice of acceptance translates to an automatic upload of that job order. So local recruitment isn't as bad in 2022. That's right. And in fact, you save quite a bit of money, in some cases thousands of dollars if you're dealing with one of the bigger papers. Not so good for the papers, but good for you. All right, you finished recruiting, what do you do? File a recruitment report. Pretty simple, right? We'll go into that in another video. Okay. It's not too bad. Just describe what you did. Describe the steps you took. Describe if there were any results. That's it. That's it. That's it. Then, do I get my workers now? No, no. <laughs> Hopefully, within 24 to 48 hours, you will receive your temporary labor certification. Certification. Double certification. Exactly, yep. That. And that means you get to go to USCIS. Oh, that's fantastic. And now I get my workers. <laughs> now you get to file an I-129. And everything you just filed. Again? Again. One copy. Two. Of the same thing? Yes. So I have to file essentially the same thing three times over the course of this program? But this time you include an I-129 and... An H supplement for the H-2B. You should definitely use premium processing if you want to get your workers oh, in 2022 or, and that's you know, anytime. Is that expensive? It's not cheap. Yeah. How much? The I-129 with premium processing, $2,110. $150 of which is the fraud prevention fee that you also have to pay. You're also going to overnight this probably because time is of the essence. It's another hundred bucks or so. We're looking at a stack thick. of papers yeah. this thick. Remember, two copies of everything. Another hundred bucks. Another hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, by the way, best practices send three checks, not one. We learned that the hard way one year. Three checks, not one. We'll talk about it. Okay. All right. We filed my I-129. Right. I know, I know what you're going to ask. Do you get your workers now? Do I get my workers now? Not until April 1st. So if... Okay. You file your I-129, you get premium processing, you should get your approval notice within 15 days. Yes. Or around there. Um, I think USCIS guarantees 15 days to process, and then you have to be notified, and, you know, hard, blah, 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 blah. hard copy letter, etc. But you get that approval, then you have to recruit your workers from abroad. I have to recruit again? Well, maybe you don't have to, but you gotta find these workers who you were certified to bring in now. But didn't I just recruit? Locally. Oh, I recruited American workers. You're saying I now have to recruit the foreign folks? You have to find the workers okay. or engage a recruiting agency to find those workers for you. Pro tip, use the agency. That's what I was gonna say. I tried to uh, recruit myself one year and give him the easy job of uh, doing the forms. Yeah, he won that one. Took me 20 hours to recruit folks. Don't do it. 
Paperwork. Sure. Paperwork is a win. Who knew? Yeah, who knew? Don't do it yourself. Get recriminates. Okay. But after all that, now I get my workers. April 1st. Assuming processing and everything is timely, they can get through the consular. Consulate. So probably after April 1st, to be honest, under uh, all the conditions that we're living in in 2022. Remember, this is a 2021, 2022 guy. Okay, this sounds like a lot. It is. It's that, and how long does this all take? Well, we started in no October, November, and your workers probably won't get here until April at the earliest. So, how long is that? Uh, five to six months. Yeah. And you're saying start early for a five to six month program. Pro process, rather. Exactly. So if you need workers in April, start thinking about this process. Start looking at what you need, where these workers are going to be working, etc. Right now. Right now. Right now. Last right. week. Last week. Two we weeks ago. A month ago. A month ago. We're filming this October 13th. It's already time for you to be thinking about this. We're taking fines through November 12th because the first date we want to file uh, prevailing wages November 1st. The last date we want to file one is November 15th. Our numbers and our, uh, you know, connection links. I'm so old, connection links. The links to connect with us are in the description of this video. Uh, and we'll see you in the next one because this is a part of a series. If you like this, please do subscribe and hit the like button. Should I hit the like button? Sure, why not? Hit the like button. We'll see you next time.